So, uh, in this lecture, we will define the current current density in terms of drift velocity, considering uh, the charge due to electron. So, Uh, what you need to consider is that uh, the electron has a charge of minus 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 which is in coulombs and one coulomb is charge is produced by uh, 6.2 into 10 raised to 20 or uh, 18 uh, electrons so this is the number of electrons needed and this is a charge per electron uh, universal definition of current is current I is equal to dQ by dt or in general current I is equal to Q divided by T. The unit is in amperes and it is charge per second. So this is a definition and suppose you are considering a case where there is a surface uh, with a surface area of delta s this is a unit surface area and you want to find a delta i current is flowing through this area so delta i is the current which is flowing through this area and now you can define the current density J as delta I divided by delta uh, S. So this is the current density and it can be written as delta I is equal to J into delta S. And now to find the current, the, the total current which is flowing through the full area, full surface, uh, if you are considered a conductor like this through which the current was flowing, initially you you took only a delta S area. Now you are want to find the current flowing through the total of the conductor which is the I current. So you can find out by integrating this and you will get the current I is equal to surface integration of j dot ds so this is how it's possible to define the current and the current density and again if you are now to find out this in terms of the drift velocity so in reality what will happen is that whenever uh, conductor is there. Suppose this is a conductor. You are connecting it with a source like a DC source. If we are considering it in this case since we are not at deriving for the alternating fields but if you are considering a voltage which is applied here this is a positive terminal and this negative terminal. So an electric field inside this conductor will be in this direction. So this electric field will be set up due to this battery or the voltage and the electrons inside the conductor will be having a motion which is in this direction. So the electric field or the electrons will be in this direction. So whenever the electron is moving, if you are considering the electron to be moving, it will face some form of opposition in terms of the positive ions present inside the atom. So the electron will strike, it will again change its path and it will again move. So it will form some form of opposition. So if you are considering a case uh, that of observation of a time period like a T, then you are considering that the motion of the velocity of the electron during this time period as drift velocity 
you. Now you will can find that the force faced by the electron will be equal to minus E that is equal to the charge of the electron into the electric field. So based on the Coulomb's law and the equation of the force can be found out as this. So if you are saying this was my second equation and this is my third equation. So and if you are applying the uh, Newton's law which says that force is equal to mass into acceleration. So if there is a time period which you are considering is the T and if you are applying the acceleration is equal to velocity divided by time then the acceleration will be is equal to U by T which is equal to your drift velocity divided by time. So your force will become force is equal to mass into drift velocity divided by time and which will be equal to minus E into E. So your drift velocity, so I will be rubbing this just so it's possible to show that your drift velocity U drift velocity u is equal to minus e into the time t divided by the mass of the electron into the electric field e. So the t is equal to average time between collisions or between it can be the time during which you are considering uh, the velocity observation. So the time interval between two collisions is known as drift velocity. So if it, it started here and if it, it, the next collision is here so this time interval which you are taking for the observation is uh, also known as the time interval and the velocity during this this will be known as a drift velocity and the current density which can be divided which is J is equal to current per unit area which can be given is equal to rho v into u. So if you are substituting the equation of the drift velocity uh, it's possible to write it as minus e t into e divided by m. And now if you are seeing that rho v is equal to my if there is a volume suppose the conductor the volume is this and the total number of electrons in this if you are saying that it is rho v. So if the number of electrons is in the n then the, num, uh, the charge per volume will be divided by number of electrons into E. So your rho v will be equal to n into E. So since electron is a negative charge it will be minus so n into E minus so this j will be equal to minus uh, or minus minus will cancel so it will be equal to n into e square tau into e divided by n. So this whole thing is something known as my conductivity and you can derive the final equation as j is equal to sigma into e and this is the equation of the current density in form of electrical field intensity and this derivation which we did 
is equal to j is equal to sigma e is known as the point form of ohm's law and the sigma value of the sigma is equal to n e square tau divided by m and the equation of the current density in terms of drift velocity is n e square tau divided by m into e also if you know the drift velocity so this is how you are deriving the point form of ohm's law so and in the next lecture we will use this same case to derive the the resistance of a conductor so it's possible to derive the resistance of the conductor based on my electrical field and in the next lecture i will show that rho r is equal to rho l by a